Welcome back to John's Films, a place where we do benchmarking of DaVinci Resolve as well as other Resolve tips and tricks. Today we're going to jump into a 3950X with a 2080 Ti for editing in DaVinci Resolve 16.2. We'll have a look at timeline performance as well as B-Raw and the Puget Systems render test. Let's get to it. One of the big questions that comes out of my benchmarking sessions is, how does it actually edit? What is that timeline performance like? Today we're going to look at it. I've got the timeline set up for a 4K 23976 timeline. It is going to view out in 4K 23976. Would you actually ever do this? No, probably not, because that's not a 4K window here on my monitor. However, this gives you an idea of what the worst case scenario might be. I'm recording with OBS, which is using my graphics card. You can see here the impact of that. Looks like it's running around 20% GPU utilization to record this. Now, as we jump into the timeline, there's three major sections. You have a unedited clips. Some of these are stock, which have already been graded. Some of these I shot. Then you've got them um, graded. Note, yeah, I know it doesn't look great, but I graded it so you'd have an idea. And then you've got a uh, double time. So these are sped up to 2x of the speed, so you can see how the processor keeps up with that. All right, let's play through it. And what we'll notice as we press play is that the unedited footage, even though this is a 4K output, which is being scaled for resolution in this window, is running through just fine. Keep an eye right up here. You'll see 24 frames per second stuck in there. Um, from a playback perspective, the CPU and the GPU are not working too hard. Uh, this is B-RAW footage. Previously, we had some ProRes, both at 444 and then some 422. And this B-RAW, uh, this I shot at 60 frames per second and slowed it down for slow-mo type effects. Now here we are with 8-bit vlog shot at 24 frames a second. And it is just unedited. Um, looks a little overexposed but I was able to pull it back in the graded section. So all of these are playing along at 24 frames a second, nice and clean. Here we are with the graded. Notice I made it snow, <laughs> uh, but it is now playing back at 24 frames a second and happy. Again with the 422, this was natively shot at 25 frames a second. It's being actively scaled to 24 frames a second. Here's the 60 FPS stuff that's graded and slowed down at 40% so that it hits 24 frames can see in the rain in the monitor and in the blinking here, this is kept up quite well. Again, you'll notice over here we're up a little bit more in CPU utilization because it's playing back this grade. Here's the vlog graded, and it seems to be holding its own still as graded footage. Now we'll get into the speed up section of this, and this just speeds it up so it should be running along double time. Notice the transition happens much faster. The GPU and the CPU are still using themselves around 30, 40%, uh, 20% on the CPU because this is a studio edition of DaVinci Resolve, which leverages that GPU much heavier. And still, with double time, these things fly through here, looking pretty darn good. Overall, I'm absolutely thrilled with this playback performance as I'm editing especially if I were to turn on the cache or turn this into a 1080p monitored window, um, you still obviously have no issues. Jumping to the B-RAW benchmarks, we're going to see that the 3950, which will be on the left-hand side, is slower in the CUDA core rendering than you get out of the 1950X, that is the old Threadripper. Now everything else is beating it, in fact the CPU shows more capable. Now as we jump into the Puget Systems benchmarks, you can see the 3950X gives me what I expect after watching Puget Systems run the benchmarks, and the 1950X, it comes in about 200 points slower on the render. As you can see, the results did not turn out like I thought they might. Absolutely, I'm thrilled with the upgrade based on the timeline performance. Compared to my old 1950X, that's the Threadripper first gen platform, with the exact same components throughout the system, I got more hitches in the timeline editing. So that's worth it, because that's what I really feel. But I'm noticing a degradation, as we saw in the benchmarks, of the editing render performance. So once it's edited, it starts rendering, and it's slower. I really do have to attribute that to the loss of quad channel memory. 
for the graphics card to queue up and then process the work as efficiently as possible because I'm rendering with the same exact engine in the same exact GPU. Well, you live and you learn, but I am thrilled with the upgrade. I'm really happy that I jumped off the Threadripper bandwagon, especially after the cost skyrocketed here with the third generation. Thank you for watching. Again, subscribe if you haven't. Click like. Help other people find this video, and have a great day.